people of the internet tonight we are debating capitalism of Ayn Rand and we are starting right now with the opening statement from Dr. Norton. Dr. Norton, the floor is all yours. Thanks guys. I'm Dan Norton. I have a PhD in philosophy and I advocate Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. You can find my work on my YouTube channel, which is linked in the description. I wanna thank Modern Day Debate for hosting this event and thank Ben for agreeing to the debate and the audience for being here and participating. In my opening statement, which I'm told I have up to 12 minutes for, I'm going to be laying out Ayn Rand's defense of capitalism as I understand it. Let me start by asking you to imagine that you are stranded alone on an island. Perhaps you were shipwrecked. In any case, once on the island, you now have a choice. You can choose to try to survive, or you can just give up and let yourself die. You can starve to death. Let's suppose you choose to try to survive. How will you do it? Well, perhaps most obviously, you need to get food. But how will you do that? You can't just wish food into existence. Praying doesn't work. You need to do things like search for edible plants or catch fish. But which plants are poisonous and which are edible? How can one catch fish? We aren't born with the knowledge of how to survive. We need to discover that knowledge and then act accordingly. To discover the knowledge we need to survive, we need to think. We need to use our rational capacity and engage with the world. If we do so, we might discover which plants are edible, how to catch fish, how to build a shelter, how to build a fire, which plants have medicinal value, and so on. If we stop thinking, if we stop using our rational minds, we lose our ability to survive or to improve our lives. Now let's say another person washes up on the island. Is that good for you or bad? Well, it depends on what kind of person it is. If it's another person who uses reason to discover knowledge and help himself survive, then he could be good for you. Maybe he can discover and teach you survival skills that you didn't have. And maybe you can also teach him things. By working together, sharing your knowledge and trading, you can both survive better than either of you could alone. On the other hand, suppose a different sort of person washes ashore. Suppose it's a lazy bum who doesn't ever want to put forth the effort of thinking and producing values. He just wants to live on you as a parasite. He happened to have a gun on him when he arrived, let's suppose. And he uses that gun to make you his slave. He just points his gun at you and orders you around. In this case, the person who came ashore is bad for you. He's just a drain on your resources. You would be better off alone. It's the threat of physical force, the gun, that allows him to make your survival worse, if not impossible. Thus, it's in your interest to have others on the island only if they agree not to use or threaten physical force against you. Force negates the value of reason. It's pointless to reason if doing so does not allow you to reap some kind of reward. But force doesn't just make reasoning pointless. It also makes reasoning impossible. If someone points a gun at you and demands that you believe two plus two is five, or that the earth doesn't move and the sun goes around it, you cannot make yourself believe that if you have seen no evidence supporting it, or if you have seen evidence contradicting it. You can mouth the words, but that's not the same as believing it. As Ayn Rand says, a gun is not an argument, unquote. What would have become of the scientific and industrial revolutions if men such as Galileo tried to think in compliance with the dogmas of religion rather than following their own independent judgment? 
their thinking would have been stifled. Those revolutions would not have happened. And we would not enjoy the modern technological civilization that we enjoy today. Now, returning to the island example, I said that a person who subjects you to force on the island would be bad for you. But that evaluation assumes a certain standard of evaluation, in particular, an egoistic standard, according to which something is good for you if, and only if, it helps you achieve your survival. If, however, egoism is bad, if self-sacrifice is the moral ideal, as it is for many people, then a life as a slave might actually be good for you. On a morality of self-sacrifice, what grounds do you have to object when others wield force against you? Insisting that you have the right to live your own life as you see fit would betray an egoistic and selfish attitude, which is the opposite of self-sacrifice. If self-sacrifice is good, it's better to submit to coercion. Thus, an ethics of self-sacrifice is in conflict with a politics of freedom. Freedom enables one to achieve one's survival by using one's mind to one's own benefit. But if one shouldn't pursue one's own benefit, if one should be selfless, there are no grounds for, ins for insisting on freedom. Instead, one should give it up. Being free is in one's self-interest. Being a slave is not. In Ayn Rand's view, only an ethics of egoism can ground the politics of freedom. Only if it is right for an individual to pursue his own interest does it make sense to banish force from human relationships. And that's what capitalism does. It allows people to interact with each other only on a voluntary basis. Initiating physical force against others is prohibited. Force can only be used in retaliation, that is, in self-defense. The role of the government in a capitalist system is and only is to protect people from force. Thus, the government has a police force to protect people from domestic criminals, a military to protect people from foreign threats, and a court system to settle disputes peacefully. But that's about it. The government does not itself act like a criminal and coerce its own citizens. This means that under capitalism, there are no taxes. Taxation is a form of coercion. If you do, do not give some of your money to the government, you will eventually be hauled off to jail by people with guns. Programs that are funded by taxation, such as Social Security, Medicare, welfare, and public education, all depend on coercion and do not exist in a capitalist system. Nor would there be any regulations. And by regulations here, I mean laws that interfere with voluntary actions. For instance, minimum wage laws that force employers to pay at least a certain amount, even though employees might voluntarily agree to a lesser amount. Or laws that prohibit you from taking a drug that lacks FDA approval, even though you might want to take it. The vast array of regulatory bodies that now exists, the FDA, SEC, OSHA, EPA, etc., would not exist under capitalism. A world without taxes and regulations is obviously a far cry from what we have today. So blaming today's problems on capitalism, as is so often done by socialists and others, is to attack a straw man. What we have today in America, and have had for many decades, is a mixed economy, not capitalism. That is, we have a mixture of freedom and coercion. And it's the coercive element, not the free element, that causes problems. Freedom is good. Coercion is bad. No country has ever been entirely free of coercion. But perhaps the US in the late 19th century came the closest. And this was a period of explosive growth for the country in which millions of people immigrated here for a better life. Freedom and progress go together. This is not an accident. 
when men are left free to think and act on their own independent judgment, they can discover new knowledge and build new technology that pushes mankind forward and raises everyone's standard of living. When thought is stifled through government control of speech, when production and trade are stifled by taxes and regulations, progress slows and mankind stagnates or even retrogresses. To conclude, Ayn Rand's defense of capitalism in a nutshell is that capitalism is the, is the system consistent with the requirements of man's survival. Man survives by reason, but force to the degree it is used makes reasoning pointless and impossible. It negates and paralyzes the mind. So if survival is the proper goal, which it is according to Rand, the proper social system is one that abolishes force and leaves man free to think and reap the rewards. Capitalism is that system. It is the system of freedom and of reason. And it is the only moral system if man's life on earth is the proper standard of morality, which, according to Ayn Rand, it is. Thank you.